You've invested in one of our great Hume Safe Water Ultraviolet Disinfection Systems, and now after a year or so of use, it's time to maintain that system to make sure it keeps giving safe, bacteria-free water for your family. But how do you do that? What, how do you get started? What do you need? Is there certain, when do you do it? And uh, are there certain tools that you need? Is there anything special that you need? Is it a difficult process? Relax, it's super easy and I'm gonna show you how starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Now these Hume Safe Water Disinfection Systems are super easy to maintain. Now whether you're a do-it-yourself or a plumber, whatever, this video is definitely for you. I'll take you through it step by step, and I'll share with you all of my tips and tricks. There are two sections to these systems. There's the filtration, and then there's the UV lamp and sleeve. The UV lamp and sleeve need to be maintained based on the timer. In other words, after a year of use, the timer will go off to remind you it's time to replace that lamp and to clean that sleeve. The filters need to be replaced at that time too, but if there's a lot of sediment in your water or dirt in your water, that kind of thing, the filters may need to be replaced more often. How do you know? Well, when the water flow starts to slow down in your home cottage or cabin, that tells you these filters are starting to get clogged and it's time to replace. Now, if you're not 100% sure how these systems work, I've got a great YouTube video that explains it all. I'll put a link in the description down below. We offer bundles of the correct replacement filters and UV lamp for both our Safe Water 10 and Safe Water 6 ultraviolet disinfection systems. Just go to our websites, watereastore.com in the US, watereastore.ca in Canada. We offer free shipping and discount pricing. So to prepare, there's a couple things you need to do. First of all, you need to protect the area underneath the ultraviolet disinfection system because there will be a little bit of water being leaked. So you can put some towels down. You're going to need a bucket or something like that to catch the water. I also suggest another bucket with some soapy water that you can use to clean out the filter housings. You also need vinegar or some kind of a descaler, CLR, lime away, something like that to clean the quartz sleeve. And speaking about the quartz sleeve, the quartz sleeve is very fragile and you're gonna be handling that and working with that. I always suggest that you have a spare quartz sleeve. In fact, when we go out to do a service call, we always send out a, a spare quartz sleeve because if that quartz sleeve gets damaged, you won't be able to fire this thing back up again. And by the way, this procedure is exactly the same for the Safe Water 10 and the Safe Water 6. So the first thing you are going to do is shut off the water going into the system with a shutoff valve. Then what you're going to do is go into the house, open a faucet somewhere and let the water run till it slows right down to a trickle because that's going to release all the pressure within the system. Then you'll have a shut off going out of the ultraviolet disinfection system and you're going to shut that off too. And what that does is when you open up the filter housings, it's going to keep all the water in the, in the whole house from draining back down through these filter housings. The next step is you're going to unplug the UV there's a couple buttons on the top, red buttons. So you're gonna push those down. And what that does, that also releases the pressure within the filter housings. If you haven't released the pressure, it's gonna be impossible to get these filter housings off. Use the filter housing wrench that came with the system and use that to loosen up the filter housings. Now, yours will be a lot tighter than these. And these are the brand new system, but then uh, uh, loosen it up and unscrew it by hand. Once you've unscrewed it by hand, then with your empty bucket, pour the contents into the bucket and remove the, fil the, the filter element. Then you're gonna to wanna to wash out the inside of the filter housing with that so uh, warm soapy water that I suggested and clean all that up. Now, before you insert the, the new filter into the, into the filter housing, you're gonna to wanna to grease these, uh, these O-rings around the top just to make sure you don't have any, any leaks. Uh, if you want to know where to get that uh, silicone grease, I'll put a link in the description down below. Whatever you use, don't use Vaseline because Vaseline is a petroleum product and it'll degrade these uh, O-rings. Pop the new filter inside. Screw it back in. So you do the same for the carbon filter. That would be the second one in line. And then you tighten the filter housings hand tight, as tight as you can put, do them hand tight. And then using the wrench, give them a little bit more, usually only about an eighth of a turn, something like that, just enough so it won't leak. By this time, the UV lamp should have cooled enough that it should be easy to handle. 
So there's a little nut on the top of the cap. You see this little black nut? So you just unscrew that and pull the whole top up. Then grab the ceramic end at the end of the um, UV lamp. Wiggle the, the cap a little bit back and forth and it will come loose. And then you can pull that lamp out. And again, we don't handle the lamp with our bare hands. We can handle the ceramic ends with our bare, bare hands, but I usually use the cloth to handle it. And we can set that aside. And then you need to remove the quartz sleeve because you need to clean that quartz sleeve. So there's a gland nut at top. You loosen that gland nut. And again, like everything, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Pull out that quartz sleeve carefully. Like I say, it is quite fragile. And again, you can handle that with a cloth. Now this is this needs to be perfectly clean, 100% perfectly clean, looking like brand new. So uh, there likely will be some deposits on it, and uh, so you need to clean that off. And uh, you can use, like I say, Lime Away, CLR, or something like that. And by the way, while I've got this out, do you see the spring at the bottom here? So you need to make sure that spring stays in there. That's a safety device. In case you drop the lamp inside when you're putting this back together, that would keep the bottom of the quartz sleeve from becoming damaged from that lamp. All right, once you've got that 100% clean, the O-rings, you check the O-rings in the top here, make sure they're still in good shape. Most of the time they are. If they aren't, the... Um, the, it, the the system, the replacement uh, sleeve comes with a, a new O-ring. Actually, the lamp comes with a new O-ring too. The sleeve comes with uh, the black O-ring and the little red one that you see buried inside the gland nut. All right, so we put the back in. And as you feed it back in, a little bit of water might spill out through the top. But again, we've protected this area with towels and buckets. So when you put that back in, it's just hand tight. So you just make it hand tight and that's good enough. You don't give it any more than hand tight. All right, then you grab the new lamp and again handling it only with the cloth and you'll see there's four pins at the end, two rows of twos. So if you go to put the, um, the connector back on the top and it doesn't quite fit, just turn it 90 degrees. It'll, um, it'll, it'll, it can connect different ways, um, 180 degrees apart. All right, so you just feed that in. And again, you can handle it with ceramic ends. And set the cap on top. There you go. Again, I had to turn it 90 degrees because the pins didn't line up the way I had it. And push it all the way down. There should be no gap between the end, the ceramic end of the lamp and the electrical connector. Push it back down and then tighten that black nut just slightly, just enough to hold it in place. Okay, that's all set. So, we've got the filters on here, we've tightened them up, we've put in the new lamp. So, now what we need to do is we need to fire up the system. After 11 months of use, the ballast starts beeping and that's what tells you it's time to replace the UV lamp. But, once you've replaced the UV lamp, the ballast doesn't know that until you've reset the timer. Doing that's super simple. All you need to do is push down the button, but don't let go until I tell you. While you're holding that button down, plug the system back in, and you'll get one long beep, three short beeps, I usually count to five, and then let go of the button. So you're gonna count how many times that red LED flashes, and it should flash 12 times if it's been reset properly. Because what that's telling you is it's going to be 12 months before it starts beeping, or start, starts flashing, to remind you when it's time to replace that lamp again. The system doesn't reset, in other words, you don't get that red uh, flashing 12 times. That's probably because the system wasn't in alarm when you replaced that UV lamp, so you need to put it into alarm. So I've got a procedure, I'll put it in the description down below, that explains to you exactly how to do that. So now you're going to open up that valve that supplies water to the system, but open it up slowly and just open it up halfway. And what that's going to do is going to fill the system with water and you're going to check for leaks. If there's no leaks, then you can open it up all the way. The next step is you're going to go to the valve after the system and you're going to open that up all the way. Once you've done that, you're going to go to the nearest faucet. I usually recommend a laundry sink or a bathtub, something like that that has good flow. 
open that up and purge all the air out of the system. There'll be quite a bit of air, you'll get sputtering uh, and, and that kind of thing going on. If you have concerns that there may be bacteria in your household plumbing somewhere, now's the time you'd use chlorine to chemically disinfect that household plumbing. If you're not sure how, I've got a great video that shows you how. I'll put a link in the description down below. Click here for your next video on ultraviolet disinfection systems, and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below. I read them all. I'd love to answer yours.